are joining us live behind the lights and cameras of the TV show Wake Up Explore Your Passion to hear their personal successes and real challenges in the pursuit of a dream here in Hollywood. This is Wake Up Radio. I'm your host Ryan Ray and joining us live today is my host, co-host, Mr. Fuzz, live in the studio. How are you, Mr. Fuzz? I'm good, I'm good. Um, now, Ryan, we're not actually able to take live calls today, are we, through Blog Talk because of our technical difficulties? I just, I didn't want to give the number yeah, and cause Yeah, we're not taking live confusion. calls. Okay, but we do have a really great show. Um, go ahead and, and who's our who's our guest today? What's, what's going on? Well, our guest today uh, for the second half of our show is Thomas Edwards, Mr. Professional Wingman, and he is joining us live via phone this morning. You basically get paid to go to bars and hang out with people. Isn't that right? That is the <laughs> the base definition of what I do. <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely a lot more that goes into it, but yeah, essentially. <laughs> so so what is a wingman? So for, it's, it's definitely a, a generation-focused thing. You know, when you think of the wingman, if everyone can remember the Coors Light commercial with the song about the wingman and how he has to jump on the quote-unquote the grenade and that's not necessarily what I do. I can do it, but that's like what I do. I pretty much am your support beam as you go out there and try to meet, per, you know, honestly, the love of your life. <laughs> no small task. I mean, come on. That's pretty easy, right? <laughs> yeah, no pressure either, right? I mean, it's definitely a difficult task, you know, especially when you have guys who it, it's very difficult for them to interact with women or for women who can't seem to get with the, you know, the right guys. How do you really help them break through that strong sticking point that's preventing them from the success. So Thomas, tell us how you got started doing this. Is this an idea that you just had one night when you were out at the bar and had actually five or six beers already in you? <laughs> how did this really get going? I really wish it was that easy. <laughs> uh, actually, you know, it dates back when I was in, in college. Um, I was much younger and I was, you know, a huge relationship guy. You know, I was very just monogamistic. and. One of, the girl, one of my uh, girlfriends had cheated on me. So it totally broke my heart, and I went through this stage of, I wouldn't say depression, but I was definitely in a low, low area of my life. And I spent a lot of time kind of looking at myself as the reason why the relationship didn't work out. And so I focused on improving myself, which every way I possibly could, whether it's by uh, reading on fitness, nutrition, learning how to network, learning how to be a better lover, <laughs> learning how to build relationships, you know, um, outside of just romantic ones, uh, anything that can really just help me become a total package, I really focused on. And I noticed that over a course of a year and a half, I was doing a lot of reading and not much uh, practicing. So I transferred schools and I figured this would be a great uh, clean slate to work off of. And so when I did that, I started to see a lot of results. So things started working really well and that's when I really got addicted to I guess the whole self-improvement aspect and so you fast forward a year and it's not my senior year in college and I'm living the life of Van Wilder but I'm graduating on time <laughs> <laughs> fast forward it. only one year I mean it's actually you've accomplished a lot in a very short amount of time and and I think what's what you've just said about your personal motivation is that you're interested in self-development it's not it's actually kind of morphed it's sort of developed into something more than just relationships now you're you're helping not only men but women too and others with, mm -hmm. with several areas of their lives isn't that right yeah absolutely I mean for, for me you know the, I think uh, a lot of people uh, correlate their success with who they have to share it with. And, you know, I think it's absolutely fine, but at the end of the day, no one's going to love you if you don't love yourself. And absolutely. so I really focus on making sure that you're living the life that you're totally satisfied with, with and your, your life pretty much fulfilled. So that way when that person does come, you're ready to add something to her life or his life that's really special and they can return the same. I, I love that. I love that because I, I think one of the, the, the misconceptions, I mean, it was very romantic in the movie, but this idea of you complete me um, doesn't really work. If we're only looking for people who kind of are the missing piece or whatever, I, I, don't, I don't think that works as correctly. And, and I love that after this relationship, what you basically did was you said, no, I've got to do some personal development. I have to be whole on my own. And then I get a whole lot more that I get to bring to that other person. Absolutely. Because, I mean, when you look at it, if you're relying on someone else to, to be happy, you know, that person may not be there all the time. And if that person is missing, does that make you less of a person? And when you really take a look at that, it makes it really difficult to realize that, wow, I'm 
my success is dependent on other people and not on how I feel. And, and that can hurt you in, in, some, in some aspects. Oh, not I just in it, relationships, but when, in, in jobs and with your family and with your day-to-day life. Absolutely. I think it can hurt you in a, in a lot of aspects. So I, kudos and thank you for, I mean, the, the idea that we're going to, the wingman thing that we're going to get into a little more here right now, um, I'm really interested, but I think that's the core right there is trying to be whole on our own and complete on our own so that we have a lot more to offer someone. Now, Absolutely. one of the things that you had told me earlier when we spoke before, Thomas, was that you felt that because of the way our society works today, that the t- traditional dating model just wasn't working. We've got instant gratification, and, and mm-hmm. now people need a new way to connect with people. Tell us a little bit about your theory there. So, I, I you know, 30 years ago, it was much easier to walk into a bar and meet a stranger. You know, it was definitely people are just definitely open to it. You know, it worked for my parents, you know, over 30 years ago. And I think today, when you have, when we're so connected constantly, and now there's online dating, which is a great supplement to dating activity, it's just tough to be able to walk into a bar or any type of social event and break into a clique that's already been formed. Mm -hmm. And so how do you navigate those, those social waters? And that's where I come in, where you have someone who's with you and you're not alone, who can help you find the places where you're going to find those quality people that you're looking for, who's open to you, and to develop a strategy of how to, to uh, I guess, swim the waters. I mean, and do you think that our connectedness, our social, digital connect- connectedness, has had an impact on personal skills? To some extent, you know, it depends on how often, how much we're connected. But I think there's a, a, a level where a lot of us take it for granted. You know, I mean. You can, you can tell, I mean, if we, if we took away the internet from someone, they'd freak out because they feel like they don't have connection <laughs> to the real world, you know? But we still have newspapers, we still have magazines, and we still have bars where you can go in, or you still have, you know, meetup groups, or you have, you know, walking down the street, you have stores. There, there are plenty of different... We, we, we always have opportunities to interact with people face-to-face, and I think because we have the online aspect, people just take it for granted. Well, and because you kind of lose your skill, your your social skills in person. And because Fuzz, I don't know if you would agree with this, but I I almost feel like we are so used to connecting with people through digital ways that maybe we've lost some of those people skills that we used to have. You know that our our past generations have had. We're we're sort of going for the the instant gratification, the instant channel because it's it is quicker and easier to send a facebook message than it is to pick up the phone or to even walk to somebody's house or drive to someone's house and see them absolutely yeah well and and on when you're doing online dating or social networking or whatever that that awkward silence that you would have in a bar well at home you can get up and go get a coke and come back you know like so i think that's a lot of people kind of miss that part of it it's like okay i've said hi now what and so that's where you come in as the wingman Interesting, yeah. man. I mean, it's clear that that what you're doing is actually providing a really valuable service to people, not only for dating and relationships, but as as social skills degrade uh, over time, what you're doing is, is going to become even more and more important. We're going to take a quick break, Thomas, and when we come back, mm-hmm. we're going to talk a little bit about the challenges and successes that you've had in, in your beginnings, and a little bit about the financial roller coaster that you rode in the beginning when you were just getting started. Stay with us here for Wake Up Radio. We'll be right back. Mm-hmm. 